Hey, my friends, it's Tom with Watchman River. Thanks for joining me. I am glad you're here. I hope you're well. It's another great day we get that the Lord has made for us to occupy and spread the gospel and wait for that pre-tribulation rapture, which I believe could happen at any time. I really do. Got a lot of stuff to cover. No time for snack suggestions today. Sorry, I just don't have the time. Uh, let's go to scripture. I want to go to... Um, do some verses about hope. Let's go to Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Love that one. Let's go to Psalm 42, 11. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my continence and my God. Let's go to Isaiah 40, verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Love that one. Wow. Psalm 121, verses 7 and 8. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore forever amen romans 15 verse 13 now may the god of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the holy spirit man matthew 11 verse 28 come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest that's exactly what jesus gives us Psalm 119, verse 114. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Isn't that beautiful? Let's do another one. Hebrews 10, verse 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Love that one. Psalm 31, verse 24. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all you who hope in the Lord. And one more, Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. What a gift we get, that Holy Spirit. So amazing. We believe in Jesus' finished work and his atoning blood, and we get that gift, that deposit of the Holy Spirit. It's so beautiful. I can't imagine living through these days without Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, please stay tuned. We'll talk about how you can know him later on in this video. So I shared a video on my telegram and it's a sister in Christ named Leslie Dayton. And I had never, I don't think I had ever seen her videos. And I saw a video she did. It's a two and a half minute video. And it's called, Don't Go Back to Sleep. And the thumbnail says, Don't Hit the Snooze Button. And she really drove the point home in two and a half minutes that we grow accustomed to all these things that are thrown at us in these, in these last days. We have so many things coming at us that we just start saying, eh, nothing's ever going to happen. You know, we hear that Iran is going to strike Israel, the next 24 to 48 hours, and we hear it for over a month. And we start saying, eh, it's never going to happen. It's a, it's the boy who cried wolf is the way she put it. And then she talked about, she said, you end up hitting snooze button on the alarm clock. We're getting all these alarms. And it's really picked up since 2020. And it is like crescendo. And it's like birth pains. But you start going, oh, I've heard this one before snooze i've heard that one too no 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 snooze and she talked about how klaus schwab from the wef coined the term poly crisis you know we're told constantly left and right from everywhere oh this is unprecedented these global disasters these approaching pandemics these wars oh you know and it's like the more you hear about these the more you go i'm just gonna hit the snooze button we, we tend to get overwhelmed and we just tune it out And then that can spread over to our belief in Jesus and his coming to take us in the rapture, where we start saying, I've been hearing this forever. Where is the promise of his coming? 
But I just wanted to let you know that Jesus is coming in his perfect time and we can't speed it up and we can't delay it. But if you look at what's going on in the world, you can't just hit that snooze button. You have to, I mean, I know we've heard for 20 years, Iran is six months away from a nuclear bomb, you know, and now we're hearing that they're days away from a nuclear bomb. And you know what? At one point they will possess a nuclear bomb because we all know they're working at it. And it's with all these crises that are coming at us. We start saying, oh, that'll never happen. And that'll never happen. And that'll never. And you know what? Every day that I make these videos, we're one day closer to Jesus saying, come up hither to the rapture of the church. And I can't just go to sleep. I can't do it. And I think near the end of her video, she said, it just drives us to reading the word of God. And that's what we should all be doing now for sure. We should all be in the, the word of God because we're very close. We're in the very last days. And I've been sounding that alarm for 20, almost 29 months. And I will do so until the day of the rapture. And I think it's upon us. I'm waiting for it. I keep saying to you guys the last couple of months, we're there. We're waiting. We're just waiting. All right. I'm going to change over to some news that's going on. Oh, and I will put the link to that video in my description. And maybe I'll put it in a pinned comment or something because it's two and a half minute video. But it is really effective, really good. Um, this is from the Times of Israel. And this to me, when I read this, I'm like, this is the fuse that has been lit to me. This is the fuse. Open Jewish prayer prostration on the Temple Mount is now routine, activists say. In recent weeks, police are no longer preventing or penalizing acts at the holy site as Ben Gavir pushes the practice and they're allowing them on a daily basis. Open prayer and prostration on the Temple Mount by Jewish worshipers is now a matter of routine and permitted by the police on a daily basis, activists for prayer rights at the holy site have said. The practice was witnessed during a visit to the Temple Mount by the Times of Israel on Wednesday, yesterday, actually that day before yesterday, where an afternoon prayer service was conducted out loud. Activists say the prayers are taking place during morning and afternoon services every day now. Every day. You realize that what this, the hornet's nest this whips up in the Muslim world. You know, the Palestinians are outraged that this is going on. Prostration on the Temple Mount is considered a special form of religious worship and even a distinct religious commandment in the right spot on the site which is why the ability to carry out the practice has been welcomed enthusiastically by Temple Mount activists. Prior to August 13th of this year, police would in general, listen to this, detain and remove Jewish and any non-Muslim visitors engaging in demonstrative prayer, such as prostration. And for those of you who don't know what prostration is, that's when they kind of, they almost get in their belly, you know, and they're just praying. A police officer briefing visitors before their visit would also instruct them not to engage in demonstrative prayer. But such instructions are no longer given, it appears. The new practice first gained attention on August 13th, which this year was the date of the Jewish fast of the 9th of Av, when worshipers who visit the Temple Mount at the same time as National Security Minister Itamar ben Gabir prostrated themselves and prayed out loud. Police did not detain or remove any of the worshipers who engaged in such demonstrative prayer. That has changed. And I really think that is the fuse. You know, Israel's basically surrounded by enemies. We all know that. Um, I, I happen to believe we're just waiting for the rapture. Because I think a lot of this stuff happens right after the rapture. It's chaos after the rapture. But that is the fuse that lights the Middle East, man. That that is what gets them in the. I just when I see that, I just want to go to the whole Christian world, wake up because we know, you know, the people that really look at eschatology and the study of Bible prophecy, we know we're in the last days. But most of the Christian world is just kind of asleep, and I just want to say, wake up, Christians, wake up. Your redemption draws near. 
We're close. This is from the Times of Israel. Gallant is reportedly telling ministers they must push for a deal, hostage release deal, or face imminent danger of multi-front war. This guy, sometimes, I gotta tell you. Defense Minister Yoav Gallant is presenting the security cabinet this evening with a document he drew up in recent days urging a hostage ceasefire deal and detailing the potentially dire consequences for Israel of a failure to finalize such a deal. It, it doesn't matter. I, you know, when you get a leader of Israel who's who's thinking like this, it's like you think you're close enough to the scene to realize like it, it doesn't matter. They're not looking for a peace deal. They're looking to wipe you off the map. That's why Netanyahu is keeps saying we got to finish this. We have to finish this. That just puts a little delay. Do you think that's going to curtail? their plan and their goal of wiping Israel off the map, this little peace deal. The report citing an unnamed, unnamed political source says Gallant has shown the document to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and very few other senior officials, and that he says it represents the view of the, the defense establishment of Israel. The document reportedly presents Israel as standing at a strategic crossroads. If Israel accepts and is able to finalize a ceasefire hostage deal, this would not only re achieve the return of the hostages, Gallant's document reportedly states, but also enables a diplomatic arrangement to calm hostilities with Hezbollah. It could also impact Iran's declared intention to avenge the killing of Ismail Hanea in Tehran last month. It's like fantasy land. I just don't understand it. It sounds good on paper, doesn't it? it? It always sounds good on paper. We'll give Hezbollah, we'll do this peace deal. Hezbollah will stop attacking us. We'll all sing Kumbaya. Just, that's not the way the Middle East works. Nobody wants a two-state solution. The whole world wants it. But all the terrorists don't want, they don't want it. They don't want it. They say they do, but they want Israel gone. And once you realize that reality, then you realize the position Israel's in, that they have to finish off these terrorists. This is from Israel Today. The Jihad to Destroy Israel. For Iran and its allies, the conflict does not concern borders, refugees, prisoners, settlements, or checkpoints. It is actually about Israel's continued existence in the Middle East. Bingo, what I was just saying. A letter sent recently by the Palestinian resistant groups in the Gaza Strip to, to Hasran Nasrallah, Secretary General of Hezbollah, serves as a reminder that Iran and its terror proxies view the conflict with Israel as a holy war, a jihad, to eliminate the Jewish state. For Iran and its allies, the conflict does not concern, what I said before, borders, refugees, prisoners. They don't want Israel to exist. They don't want Israel's existence in the Middle East. They know that. We know that. This is from Insider Paper. Iran further increases stockpile of highly enriched uranium. Iran has further increased its stockpiles of highly enriched uranium in recent months, according to a confidential report by the IAEA, which is the International Atomic Energy Agency. Yeah, they keep, you know, we, like I said at the beginning of the video, like we can hear this and hear it, and you start saying like, well, that's never gonna happen. We've been hearing that for 20 years, but they are building up their stockpile of enriched uranium, you know? It's happening. Like at some point, they will say, we have it unless Israel takes it out before they get to that point, which is a very high possibility. What else? You guys okay? You need a cookie? <laughs> go get, pause the video and go get a cookie. This is from Israel Today. Uh, Israel's security cabinet approves maps detailing the IDF's continued control of the Gaza-Egypt border, the Philadelphia corridor, as part of any ceasefire deal. Prime Minister Netanyahu sees the fact that Israel surrendered control of the border in 2005 
as directly related to the October 7th catastrophe. Israel cannot entrust its security to anyone else. They're finally learning. Maybe a little too late. But God's hand is on that nation and on those people. Also from Israel today, the government, the Israeli government today voted to extend until December 1st its emergency authorization to activate and deploy up to 350,000 reserve soldiers if needed. There is still a very real chance of full-scale war in the north. So they extended that deadline. The leader of the Houthis in Yemen said our preparation for a response against the Israeli enemy continues. Its timing will be a surprise to the enemy. So they still are getting threatened by the uh, the Houthis. Uh, Amir Sarfati on Telegram said the Israeli cabinet has decided that the IDF will remain in the Philadelphia corridor, regardless of any potential hostage deal, which really means that Hamas will definitely say no. They've said no to every single deal, but they would say no to that because they don't want them there. Egypt's mad about that. Everybody, nobody wants them there. How can you build tunnels to go attack Israel if you got the IDF all over the place? You know, they want them just, we want a peace deal where the IDF goes away so we can build tunnels to attack you. Another one uh, from Amir, he said, Egypt is reportedly sending 10,000 troops to Somalia. Things could escalate quickly in the Horn of Africa. There are so many rumors of war and they're escalating every single day. Don't hit the snooze button and say, well, wars and rumors of wars have always happened. Jesus is not coming back soon. Also, this was incredible. This is from the Jewish Chronicle. A rare first temple era stone seal was unearthed in Jerusalem. A rare and unique first temple era, first temple era, Stone seal inscribed with a name in Paleo Hebrew script has been uncovered near Jerusalem's Temple Mount. The Israel uh, Antiquities Authority announced yesterday on Thursday, the ancient black stone seal, which was unearthed in an excavation by the Temple Mount's southern wall, is believed to date back 2,700 years and was used by a senior official in the Kingdom of Judah's administration. Amazing the state-run archaeological body said. Man, we're living in the last days. Listen to this one. I don't know if you heard about this yesterday. I don't know if it's still going on. Or actually, was it this morning? It's this morning. Venezuela reports total or partial power failure in all states, according to the minister. A blackout plunged most of Venezuela into darkness early Friday morning, this morning, according to Communications Minister Freddie Nanas, who attributed the event to sabotage. We are reporting that at approximately 4.40 a.m. Friday, August 30th, an electrical sabotage took place in Venezuela, a sabotage against the national electrical system, which has affected almost the entire national territory. All 24 states are reporting total or partial loss of electricity supply, he told the state channel. Incredible. Another one from Insider Paper. The Kremlin says it's not worried Putin could be arrested in ICC member Mongolia. So the Kremlin said today it was not worried that Mongolia could arrest President Putin during his visit next week to the member of the International Criminal Court, which has issued arrest, an arrest warrant for Putin. Putin will travel to Mongolia on Tuesday in a first trip to an ICC member since the Hog Base Court issued the warrant arrest for his arrest. There are no worries. We have a great dialogue with our friends from Mongolia, Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said. Can you imagine what would happen if they did arrest him? It's like, whoa. You know, it would... It's crazy world. We're living in crazy clown world. Anything can happen as we await Jesus, who is coming very soon to take us home, by the way. Very soon. We're in the last days. Yesterday, I don't know where it ended up at the end of the day, but midday, Dollar General, the dollar store, shares had dropped 26%, marking the steepest intraday decline in its history. 
the CEO attributes the decline to core customers who feel financially constrained. When the dollar stores start going broke, you know your country's in trouble. I'm just saying. Also, this typhoon is hitting J Japan, and it's pretty bad. It's weakened now to a tropical storm, but there's so much rain. But this is from Insider Paper. Weakening typhoon churns through Japan, up to six people dead. They said it weakened to a tropical storm today, but was still dumping very heavy rains as it slowly churned through Japan, triggering transport havoc and landslide warnings. Up to six people killed. That's going on there. Pray for those people. It's just got to be awful. Also, a 6.0 earthquake off the east coast of Kamchatka, Russia, today at 4.24 p.m. their time, Russian time. Last 24 hours, 31 earthquakes over 4.0, 8 over 5.0, 1 over 6.0. There you go. All right. How would you like to turn yourself into an AI character? You can do that in Clown World. <laughs> this is from TechCrunch. Social network butterflies AI adds a feature that turns you into an AI character. <laughs> like so, I'm sorry I laugh at this. It's just ridiculous. You know, it's like grown-ups play kid games now. At some point in the last 30 years, People stopped growing up. We all kind of know that, especially as older people. And I'm not, I know I'm sounding like a boomer, but you know, at some point, it's kind of like people just say, I don't want to grow up. I want to wear my Peter Pan outfit until I'm 80. <laughs> don't worry, I won't be doing that here. You know, I don't look good in tights. <laughs> Butterflies AI, the new social network where humans and AIs interact with each other. Shoot me now. Uh, it is launching a new clones feature that turns you into an AI character. <laughs> this latest addition builds on a feature launched to the public back in June, and it lets users create AI personas. They're called butterflies that automatically create posts on the social network that other AIs and humans can then interact with. Can you, you understand how close we are to the beast system? When he gives breath to an image... And life to it. I'm telling you, with this, we are very, very close to that seven-year tribulation. And we are out of here via Jesus and his grace and mercy before the seven-year tribulation. With this new feature, users can take a selfie and create themselves as a butterfly with a developing backstory. The idea behind the feature is to give users the ability to reimagine themselves in the form of an AI character. While not everyone may be interested in creating an AI clone of themselves and having others interact with it, the new feature is aimed at people who want to have a bit of fun and visualize how their life could be different. Find Jesus now before it's too late. That's how your life could be different. Some fake butterfly app that turns you into a, a talking marshmallow is not going to help your life. We got we to gotta spread the gospel, guys. Man, this world is... It's going a little crazy. <laughs> it's going a little crazy. And we are the salt and light. We need to shine light on these people. We really do. All right, you want to go to some comments of the day? Let's do it. I got a few of them here. Doug, as the world spirals out of control, we have Jesus Christ to fall back on as our solid rock. What a great honor it is to serve him. Blessings to all. Thank you, Doug. Amen. Rail fan, I'm so tired of this world and all of its evil and corruption. I want a new beginning. I want to go home. I know a lot of people are saying amen right now. But we're going to be salt and light until Jesus takes us home, right? Anita, Father, all I have comes from you. I know joy because of your love. I know grace because of your forgiveness. I know peace because of your promises. I know hope because of your imminent return. All I have, all I am, and all I've accomplished is because of you. Thank you for what you have done for me, what you continue to do for me in my life, what you are about to do for me. I stand in awe of your blessings, firmly grounded in gratitude for the ways you care for me. Thank you, Father. That's beautiful, Anita. Thank you. Man, that's like poetry. Beautiful. Rachel. 
Yes, family, be grateful for the spiritual growth we're experiencing in the valley. Don't be afraid while you're there in the valley. Believe God's promise in Psalm 23, verse 4. There's always lots to be grateful for. Thanks, Christ our Lord. Thank you, Rachel. Yeah, he turns our valleys into springs of water. You know, amazing. Sally from South Carolina. I can't wait to skip into heaven. I'm 70 now and skipping is not on my menu. <laughs> I love that. But the thought of meeting Jesus makes me want to skip. <laughs> I love that. Thank you, Sally. Yeah. The thought of meeting Jesus. Sometimes the reality hits me some days more than other days that we really are. Try to try to get in the frame of mind to really see this. We really are very close to being face to face with Jesus. Does that give you joy? Does that frighten you? Are you scared of that? I think some people are. Gives me total joy because I know I have nothing to bring Jesus. All I have is my hope and my faith in him and his finished work. I can't present him with anything else. And that actually makes me not afraid to be face to face with Jesus. Because he, he loves me. He can't love me any more than he does. Same thing with you. Like no matter what you're going through, no matter if you belong to Jesus, he can't love you any more than he does right at this very moment. And that gives me hope and encouragement knowing that when I'm face to face with him, all I can do is just praise and hug and fall at his feet and thank him because he's our king of kings. He's our rescuer, our redeemer. And so many people have this frame of mind that God is this very strict disciplinarian who's just waiting to yell at you for your next wrong move. No, he expects your next wrong move. No, he's waiting to lavish his goodness on you for eternity when you belong to him. You realize that? You can't do anything today that's going to make God love you more than he does right now. Don't believe the lies that you've got to walk, walk in perfect holy righteousness so you can earn the love and grace and forgiveness of Jesus. It's not true. We believe that Jesus came here 2,000 years ago and put on human flesh. We believe that we are sinners and we were in dire need of a rescue. We believe that Jesus is that rescue. He left heaven to come here, to put on human flesh, to live completely perfect, to fulfill the law 100%, to be placed on a cross bleeding, to die for us. And when he was on the cross, everything you've ever done, Sin-wise, every sin, past, present, and future, they were all placed on him 2,000 years ago because he's the God of the forefront. He looks at life like a like looking at a parade from a helicopter. He sees the beginning, he sees the end, and he sees it all in one fell swoop. So all your sins, you weren't even born. You weren't even a glimpse in mama's eye. You weren't even born, and Jesus had every sin you will ever commit placed on him. And he did it because he loves you. And when he shed that blood, it was the once for all forever payment for sin. There will never be another drop of blood shed by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords because that blood is sufficient. It's powerful. Like I said, it can forgive every sin, remove every sin that's ever been committed. And all you have to do is say, Jesus, I, I am a sinner. I I'm, I'm a wretch. And I need payment for these sins. And sometimes it's hard for people to do that. There's a lot of pride. We all have pride. We fight that and fight that. But we say to Jesus, I'm going to humble myself. I'm a sinner. I need the payment. And I, I believe, I have faith in your blood that that blood will wash me white as snow. It'll remove all of my sins away from me as far as the east is from the west. I'm trusting in your blood. I believe in your blood. And I believe in your finished work. I believe Jesus, that you left a throne in heaven and came here and lived perfectly. And I believe you were nailed to the cross and you shed that blood. And I believe you died. 
you were buried and you resurrected on the third day. Jesus, I need a savior. I want these sins out of my life. I want them washed white by your blood. I believe your blood will do that. And I believe in you and your finished work. Jesus, I love you. I need a savior. Thank you. You're saved when you do that. There's no other works you have to do. You're saved when you believe that Jesus paid it all. You're sealed till the day of redemption when you believe in the power of the blood and Jesus finished work. You're born again. God will put his Holy Spirit in you. You'll be a new creation in Christ, seated in heavenly places. You won't be here for the coming seven year tribulation that's about to happen to this world. You will be raptured. You will be snatched up out of danger at some point very soon by Jesus himself, and you will be with your brothers and sisters forever in a perfect family in paradise. But if you hear this message, this gospel good news message I've just told you all about, and you're like, you're nuts, dude. Grow some hair, you bald dude. You're nuts. I'm good. I'm a good person, and I'm just going to trust in my goodness. I'm more good than bad. Or I don't even believe in your sky daddy. I don't believe in your fairy tale, Jesus. If you don't have a change of heart before you breathe your last breath, you will face Jesus on judgment day. You will know it's Jesus. You'll know you're in the presence of God. And you'll know that your sins are still with you because you rejected the payment for them. You heard the good news that Jesus paid for your sins with his blood. And you were like, no, I don't want that. I don't need that. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. And you'll know it on judgment day. And when Jesus says to you, away from me, I never knew you. You'll be led off to eternal separation from God. It's not a party. It's not some heavy metal party with music and beer. That's Satan's lie. It's weeping. It's wailing. It's gnashing of teeth. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. It never ends. And you won't walk away from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus, and say you're unfair. You will say, I heard the gospel message and I willfully said, I don't want that payment for my sins. You really want to be that person? Don't be that person, okay? Don't do it. Today is a day of salvation. Today, turn to Jesus. It's the most important decision of your entire life. Don't shut this video off. If this is tugging at your heart and you're like, I really should do something about this, don't shut this video off without bowing your head and saying to Jesus, I believe. I believe now, I understand, I'm a sinner, I have to get this sin problem taken care of. And I believe your blood does that, I have faith in your blood. And I believe that you went to the cross and you died and you were buried and you resurrected because you love me. Jesus, I need a savior, do that today, okay? Do it today, your journey will start, you'll never be the same. And time is very short. I'm gonna shut the camera off now. And I'm going to say a prayer for every person who watched this video. And if we're not raptured today, and man, today is a perfectly good day for the rapture. But if not, God willing, I will see you guys tomorrow. I love you guys.